Buonasera, sono Fra Gianfranco, il custode del Tempio del Redentore e del Convento del Santissimo Redentore. E do il benvenuto a tutti voi in occasione del concerto che celebra l'European Culture Heritage Summit. Questa chiesa palladiana, frutto di un voto del Senato della Repubblica del 1576, è custodita a lungo i secoli dai frati Cappuccini, onorati della preziosa custodia a causa dei fratelli che si sacrificarono al tempo della peste per curare i malati che venivano isolati dal resto della città. Desidero fare una speciale menzione di un frate santo che ha vissuto in questo convento e che svolse un ruolo importante nell'Europa tra il 5 e il 600. San Lorenzo da Brindisi, dottore della Chiesa. Egli girò in lungo e in largo l'Europa, in quel periodo in cui l'Europa era dilaniata dalle guerre. Veniva chiamato dai sovrani europei per fare da mediatore, per portare pace e bene e disinnescare sul nascere ulteriori guerre che avrebbero portato solo fame e miseria. Saluto e ringrazio di nuovo tutti voi, le autorità civili ed ecclesiastiche che hanno collaborato per questo evento, i telespettatori e gli ascoltatori, e i lavoratori che tra ieri e oggi si sono impegnati per allestire questo concerto. Concludo con un saluto speciale all'Orchestra Giovanile dell'Unione Europea, che là dietro nel coro dei frati che si stanno preparando. Spero che mi sentiate. Un saluto a tutti e a ciascuno di voi ragazzi. Ho saputo che avete avuto mesi impegnativi con molte date e molti progetti. Complimenti. Guardiamo a voi con simpatia e speranza. Prima parlando con una delle vostre responsabili, mi diceva che il musicista si esibisce per trasmettere ciò che sente. Trasmettere ciò che sente dentro e l'amore per la musica. Quindi vi chiediamo e attendiamo emozioni. E il Signore Gesù benedica tutti voi. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as Secretary General of the European Union Youth Orchestra, welcome to this special concert. Actually, I say concert, but in a way, it's not a usual kind of concert. Um, in, it, there is a kind of um, tension that's been around for centuries about artists, which is, can they be left alone to work on their own? Or do they need to come into the world and take part in the battles and the problems that we have in the world. And this concert is certainly inspired by that latter idea, that the artist has to engage with issues of our time. So this is a concert with meaning, a meaning stemming from the climate emergency that we're all aware of. I'm aware that it's about one year since on the 28th of September 2020, Um, there was a meeting of leaders from various parts of the world of the United Nations Summit for Biodiversity. And it's very interesting to read what they said. They made a pledge. They made a pledge of the need to take action. And it ends with the statement, we are in a state of planetary emergency. The second half of this evening's concert is dedicated to that sense of urgency and emergency. You will be hearing the second performance of the 17 strokes of the bell for sustainability, first performed in 2019 at the Rome Sustainability Conference, and then the world premiere of Floating Autumn by Carmen Fizzarotti, which has been composed using the algorithm which scientists and artists have used to try and see in every city in the world what life will be like in 2050. 
Hearing through Carmen's score what Venice may be like through sound, imagining through sound what it may be like, may not be easy hearing, it may not be easy listening, but it's nevertheless something we all have to engage with. And we hope that we will play a tiny part in making our leaders hear of the need to sign the pledge for biodiversity reversal. But first, as a welcome, let us remember the place where we are, the city. We've already heard about this extraordinary church, and in a way, it seems to me that this church functions as a kind of metaphor for the idea of salvation, maybe more than anywhere else in Venice. So that, we hope, helps. But let us also think of other parts of Venice. Across the Bacino stands the church of La Pietà, and that church is a church which Antonio Vivaldi worked in and which had one of the greatest orchestras in Europe, said to be, of the women and the girls of the Pietà. Even now, if you go into the Pietà and you stare up at the ceiling, you see an amazing fresco by Tiepolo. And if you look carefully in one corner, you see what is said to be a red-haired head of Antonio Vivaldi. Let us begin with the spirit of Vivaldi. Welcome.
it is very hard to try to describe what is part of an intangible cultural heritage of Venice. Every stone corner, reflection of light under a bridge, seems to have something to tell, a story to communicate. The way a gondolier turns into a canal, how much gold has to be put in the mixture of a wood in Dorador, how to print and sell books in one of the first towns in the world that definitively improved the editorial marketing history. All have a different sense and a different taste. The possibility is doubly valuable for inhabitants called to think to their town in a different way and for visitors brought to know the town more consciously and a little more deeply under its surface of beauty. Vorrei usare le parole di una donna per descrivere Venezia nel Cinquecento, una città unica già allora. Parole di una persona che condusse una vita particolare, che cambiò poi radicalmente per dedicarsi ad altre donne. Parole che contengono un monito finale, autunnale, che forse non era inteso verso la città, ma che risulta oltremodo attuale, come vedremo. Questa donna è Veronica Franco. Danzammo in te, la nostra primavera, Venezia, paradiso, allegra e altera, figlia d'amore, lussuria, bellezza, schiave di un solo dovere, l'ebbrezza. Fluttuammo tra cielo e terra, leggere, compiute di abbondanza e di piacere, eterne, inebriate di splendore, fermate in gioventù da un Dio pittore. Ma il nostro paradiso, ahimè, non dura se l'uomo per timor non se ne cura.
Venice was therefore queen of the seas, but today the sea seems to have become a trap. She was and is capable of being resurrected because she is strong, but she is also fragile and cannot be abandoned to the dangers she runs. Warning signs must be read and remedied. The very place from which we speak is one of those linked to the plague, and the Venetians were able to cope with it. Today, we face new plagues. A Venezia in passato è avvenuto che isole intere siano sprofondate per sempre in laguna, come Costanziaca o San Marco in Boccalama, Ammiana e Metamauco. Oggi la città deve fare invece i conti con l'innalzamento generalizzato del livello, dei, del livello dei mari, che sta rubando centimetri di rive, di pietre, di possibilità di muoversi, abitare, vivere in una città normale. Negli ultimi anni la frequenza e l'altezza delle maree è aumentata in modo esponenziale, come se Venezia fosse il fragilissimo termometro del mondo. Una bolla di mercurio destinata a comprimere al suo interno, a ogni montare di marea, tutte le speranze, le visioni future, le aspettative di normalità di una città che nel suo essere millenaria è fra le più moderne tra quelle che la mente umana abbia potuto concepire. Goal one, end poverty in all its forms, everywhere. Goal two, end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Goal three, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Goal four, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Goal five, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Goal six, ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Goal seven, ensure access to affordable reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Goal eight, promote sustained, inclusive, sustainable economic growth, full productive employment, decent work for all. Goal nine, build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Goal 10, reduce inequality within and among countries. Goal 11, make cities and human settlement inclusive safe, resilient, and sustainable. Goal 12, 
ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Goal 13. Take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Goal 14. Conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. Goal 15. Protect, restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification, halt and reverse land degradation, and halt biodiversity loss. Goal 16. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Goal 17. Strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Thank you. 
grazie a tutti. Sono Carmen Fizzarotti, è un piacere, è veramente un onore, sono veramente commossa da questa, da questa esecuzione della meravigliosa European Union Youth Orchestra con Laura Marzadori, che ringrazio moltissimo. È veramente è stata una sfida per me partecipare a questa tematica del climate change con uh, The Uncertain for Season Project, il cui animo è proprio quello di fare il punto sulla cruciale tematica del, del cambiamento climatico ed è un'operazione che è stata fatta attraverso uh, la ricomposizione dell'autunno di Vivaldi tramite un algoritmo che ha ricomposto e quindi è stata una reinvenzione anche da parte mia uh, dell'autunno di Vivaldi. Quindi voglio ringraziare veramente moltissimo eh, il, tutto il progetto intero, la EUIO, eh, Peter Stark, Marshall Marcus, Alberto Tosofei, eh, Laura Marzatori. Eh, io credo che la musica abbia una potenza espressiva veramente immane e che attraverso questo si possa aggiungere alla sensibilità di ciascuno di noi. Quindi grazie. Thank you all for your presence uh, at this world premiere and the opportunity for us to begin to make some statements about the situation in the world today. Of course, an event like this is simply not possible without the vision of people to enable this orchestra to get onto a stage. And when I talk about the vision, I really mean the vision of not only the European Cultural Heritage Summit, but actually the person who's been driving a lot of that, and that is Secretary General of Europa Nostra, Sneska Kualvlivic Mihailovic. Wow. What an end of an unforgettable day and evening in Venice. Marshall, you have surpassed, you and this formidable European Union York Orchestra surpassed all our dreams. Such a summit in Venice and such a day, such an evening is of course, as you said, always the product of partnership product also of courageous and audacious dreams that you dream with your partners. And so it is in this extraordinary place, after this extraordinary concert with a meaning, that I can tell you that if we are here in Venice on the 23rd of September, it is because it was the European Union Youth Orchestra could be in Venice on that day. And that, is, that was for us the starting point come to say we will build the program around the day when these extraordinary young musicians, the future of Europe, uh, the spirit of Europe could be with us in Venice. And thank you, Marshall, for um, you and the orchestra for immediately embracing the idea that we should be together in this extraordinary time. So we had our date. Then we had to have a program. We had to have, and we were discussing so much the what kind of program in this particular time in Venice and the messages that we want to pass, what will be the program. And we immediately agreed it has to be a concert with a meaning, not just any music that we will enjoy, it, but a music that will, through the young musicians, we will somehow transpose into the music all the messages that we brought together through all of you, through all of your work, and through all the program of our summit, sort of uh, put it into music and that is you have succeeded in a marvelous way and that is martial tribute to you 
to your vision that has very much somehow coincided with our vision. And when you came with the idea of organizing the, contributing to the uncertain four season projects in Vanix, we immediately said, yes, that is, that is what we need for our uh, summit. And we need a concept for the future of Venice, but in fact, this is a concept for the future of our planet. And sort of combining the spirit of the La Serenissima, the spirit of Venice, the spirit of Vivaldi's music, and the spirit of the 21st century, and all our anxiety, and all our concern for the future of our planet, and the future of this particular place, that was the program that we had to have. And then we had the program, and then we had to find a place. The place that will also convey, in fact, reinforce all those messages. It was thanks to the friars of this extraordinary church, and thank you so much for opening the doors and allowing this concert for history, I would say. It is a historic concert, but concert for the future, to take place in Palladio's masterpiece. Because it is also our summit, it is the summit for the new European Renaissance. So we had to be inspired by the masterpiece of the master architect of uh, uh, Italian Renaissance. And the fact that we could put this all together, together with all of you coming from all over Europe, because we were worried, will this be able to, will it happen? And so it is happening, you're all here. We are celebrating the rebirth, the rebirth after the pandemic in Redentore. Again, what a symbolism that we are here with the youth of Europe, with this extraordinary concert with a meaning. And, 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 and so it is really the moment also full of emotion, but also the moment we want to ask the world leaders to pledge, to pledge for nature and to reverse the biodiversity by 2030. And that's why these moving 17 strokes of the bell for sustainability, Marshall, I never thought that I would be so moved by the 17 sustainable development goals. You have given spirit and the sound to these goals. And suddenly I think we will all be, when we will be reading these goals, we would have this image of this place and the sound of, of these bells in us and, 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 and sort of even more um, uh, convinced that we have to join forces, we have to join our voices because we don't want Vivaldi to sound like it was sounded in the uncertain, in the floating autumns. We would like again Vivaldi to sound in a more, in a more harmonious way. But for that, we need to pledge each and every one. And we have all our, our Europa Nostra, the European Union Youth Orchestra, to send that message to the world leaders from the Redentore, from Venice, uh, as we are plan as we are preparing the the COP26 summit. So it is a concert with a purpose and a concert which is calling for action and which is in a prelude to the last day of our summit tomorrow, where we will indeed present a Venice call to action for a new European Renaissance. So thank you, thank you once again to you, fantastic uh, Carmen Vizzarotti, um, the young Italian um, composer who, um, uh, who allowed us uh, to uh, witness the world premiere and uh, also the solo uh, special, uh, also thanks to the soloist Laura Marzadori who with other musicians uh, performed this concert with a purpose for us. And I just say at the end what you will be hearing as a departure music when we will be going out of this temple of the spirit of the Serenissima. Thank you, Alberto, for having been also the narrator uh, of the spirit of La Serenissima. So you will hear the music of Giovanni Gabrielli, Sonata Pianeforte. It has been composed in 1597, 425 years ago. So may we all be able, 
not only we, but future generations be able to enjoy this beautiful music for hundreds and hundreds of years after us, but only if we all join forces to ensure a more sustainable and more beautiful future for our planet.